How much extra performance will you squeeze out of the 1660 Super if you grab yourself a Ryzen 5 3600? What about that Ryzen 7 3700X? Is it worth grabbing one of those two chips over the 1600 AF for gaming on a 1660 Super? Let's find out. What's going on guys, I'm Brian and today we are going to help you determine if the 3600 or the 3700X is worth the premium over the 1600 AF when you're gaming on the 1660 Super. As always, check out the description box below if you're interested in any of the related links. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. And if you find this video helpful or entertaining or anything like that, feel free to like this video with a big old thumbs up. All right, so just like the first video in the series, I want to run through the test bench with you guys, as well as my minor caveat. So first off, I don't actually own the Ryzen 5 3600, but I do have the Ryzen 7 3700X. And hold on, don't dislike this video just yet. Like I said in my other video, the biggest reason I got the 3700X over the 3600 was the fact that if you were a, if you disable two cores on the 3700X, it actually performs almost identically um, compared to a 3600. And so since this chip was like an investment for this channel, by getting the 3700X, I could actually do pretty accurate testing for you guys for both the six core 3600, as well as the eight core 3700X. Now, if you don't believe me, I totally get it. That's why I ran and I'm gonna provide you guys with the multi-core and single core tests on Cinebench R20. Feel free to go ahead and compare them to your favorite YouTuber. Um, or tech news outlet or whatever, I will be leaving a few of the ones that I like to follow down in the description box below. So feel free to check those out um, to compare my results with theirs. All right, as for the rest of the test bench, the system is gonna be using the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard, the Hyper 212 Black Edition um, to cool the CPU, a 16 gigabyte kit of 3200 megahertz speed, cast latency 16 memory, and then I personally have the MSI Gaming X version of the 1660 Super. The only variable that was changed between each testing, like for each CPU testing, was the CPU itself. Nothing else was changed Whatsoever. Now, as for testing, the 1600 AF was tested at stock speed as well as overclocked to 4 gigahertz at 1.2 volts. The simulated 3600 and the actual 3700X were only tested at stock speeds because overclocking really doesn't improve performance all that much um, for those chips. And in all the scenarios, the GTX 1660 Super was tested at stock as well as a pretty reasonable overclock of plus 125 megahertz on the core and plus 750 megahertz on the the memory. Keep in mind that overclocking results will vary from model to model. So if you grab a different 1660 Super, you may have different overclocking numbers. Heck, if you grab the same MSI one that I got, um, you might have the different numbers as well. It'll depend from you know chip to chip. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into the results. So I tested six games all at 1080p using max or high settings, just really depends on the game. And then I'll also have the specifics in each chart for you guys if you're interested um, about the exact settings. Um, in the last video of the series, I did include medium settings, but I decided that I would include um, CSGO results instead. And this is because CSGO is a good test to determine performance difference between CPUs. It is not very like GPU intensive, even at like the max settings in the game. And so the faster the CPU you have, the more frames you will typically get. And with that said, here are the results.
So as we can see from the results, when it comes to the 1660 Super, all three of the CPUs are more than enough to push the frames it can deliver. The 1600 AF basically does as good of a job as the 3600 or the 3700X in every game I tested um, besides CSGO. And this is because this particular system will be GPU bound in the majority of games you play. Not all, but the majority. That's exactly why I included CSGO in my tests because it clearly shows you how much faster the 3600 and the 3700X are compared to the 1600 AF. And I did all this to illustrate that with the 1600 AF, if you ever get a faster GPU, you may actually start to see your system become CPU bound. And it'll start showing itself in lower consistent frames, AKA lower 1% and 0.1% lows. Now I'm not saying the 3600 or the 3700X are the better buy at this price point. What I'm trying to say is that if you find games that aren't as smooth of an experience as you would like, no matter what CPU or GPU you have, you can always tweak some settings to improve your frame consistency. In PC games, there are gonna always be settings that will beat up, like absolutely just destroy your CPU and GPU. I hope this explanation kind of makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, feel free to go down in the comments below and let me know and I'll do my best to further explain it. And so which CPU should you buy with the GTX 1660 Super? Well, for me, the answer is pretty simple. All around, I think you should still be picking up the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and skipping the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3700X. That's actually Ryzen 7 3700X, not the Ryzen 5. Of course, there are occasions where like the 3600 or the 3700X will be the better choice, but when we're strictly talking about gaming, I don't think I can really justify spending so much more money just to get like a little bit of a, a boost, you know, a little bit of a boost in performance. Heck, even if you you know you want to stream or do some video editing on the side, for a build with the 1660 Super, I don't think the 3600 or the 3700X are worth your money. Spend it on like improving other parts of your build. If there are any other CPUs that you would like to see face off for a specific GPU or GPUs to to you know for specific CPUs, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, please give me a solid thumbs up and consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.